morning. A very warm welcome to each and every one today. Um, glad you're here. Uh, it's a TGIS day. Thank God it's Sunday. Let's do it with enthusiasm. Thank God it's Sunday. Absolutely. Closer to Thanksgiving week. Um, the altar flowers today are uh, given in, in glory to God uh, from uh, Merle Freitag for God's healing grace in his life. The prayers of God's people on his behalf. He's here uh, moving forward, so that, uh, we're grateful we can celebrate today with the uh, altar flowers and God's healing grace. You may notice that it's kind of empty up here in the care center area. More COVID's up there, so just being safe. So they'll be on lockdown until we know, but um, they'll be able to watch it. On, on the television, the nurses got everything prepared. So you and the care center, we love you. Uh, God bless you. Uh, hang in there. It's okay. AL is COVID free. And we just heard now that IL is COVID free. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yay. So um, we're, we're celebrating the, the grace of our Lord Jesus today. So we begin with uh, from all that dwells below the skies. top of page three with our invocation. As we gather on this day, Lord, that you have made, we make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, asking Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. 
Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. We take a moment of silence for self-examination. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, He gives the power to become the children of God, bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who have begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We join in the hymn. God of all blessing, your name is wonderful. Great is your faithfulness. Your presence cheers and guides us. You grant us strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Help us appreciate your mercies, which are new every day. We declare you are indeed faithful in every season of life. Empower us by your Spirit to live confidently in your faithfulness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to turn the page. The second hymn, His Name is Wonderful, is the theme hymn for our series. And so we've been singing it every week. His Name is Wonderful. We begin with Holy, Holy, Holy. Oh 
Testament reading from Joshua chapter 1, also the basis of God's word to us today. Now it came about after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, cross this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them to the sons of Israel, every place on which the sole of your foot treads, I've given it to you, just as I spoke to Moses. No No man man will be be able able to stand stand before you all the days days of your your life. life. Just Just as as I have been been with Moses, Moses, I will be with you. you. I will will not not fail you or or forsake you. you. Be Be strong strong and and courageous. courageous. For you you shall shall give give this people people possession possession of the the land, land, which which I swore swore to their their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, so that you may have success wherever you go. This This book book of the the law shall not not depart depart from from your mouth, but you you shall shall meditate meditate on it day day and night. You may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. Then you will make your way prosperous and will have success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. turn to page, the top of page 7, where we have our Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory Glory to you, you, O Lord. Lord. For it is just like a man about to go on a journey who called his own slaves and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, each according to his own ability And he went on his journey. Immediately, the one who had received the five talents went and traded with them and gained five more talents. In the same manner, the one who had received the two talents gained two more. But he who received one talent went away and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. 
Now, Now after, after a long, a long time, time, the master, master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. The one who had received the five talents came up and bought five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things. I put you in charge of many things. Enter the joy of your master. Also the one who received the two talents came up and said, Master, you entrusted two talents to me. See, I have gained two more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You are faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one also who had received the one talent came up and said, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. I was afraid, went away, and hid your talent in the ground. See, you have what is yours. But his master answered and said to him, Therefore take away the talent from him and give it to the one who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has, more shall be given. He will have an abundance. But from the one who does not have, even what he does have shall be taken away. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you O Christ. Christ. We confess our common Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in one God, Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence, thence he will, he will come, come to judge, judge the living and the, and the dead. dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy, Holy Christian Church, Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
join me in a word of prayer. Gracious Father, today we do declare you are indeed faithful. And we're so grateful that you have revealed partially your character and nature to us on this side of heaven. May your word today, by your spirit, encourage us in your faithful hand in our life and the past, today and in the days to come. Holy Spirit, open our hearts and minds to your truth today in Jesus' name. All God's people said, Amen. Amen. I invite you to follow the outline on page 10 if you'd like to do so this morning. There was an ad in the paper that said, Faithful Dog for Sale. So uh, John called up the owner for details. He said, I saw your offer for a faithful dog. Is he good with kids? Oh, absolutely. Kind, gentle, lots of patience. Well, I have another question. Uh, is he a yard dog or a house dog? Oh, he's both. He's good both ways. Okay, one final question. Is he really, really faithful? Oh, he's very faithful. This is the fifth time I'm selling him. How many would agree with me? Faithfulness is precious. And what a blessing it is that God revealed his character to us. Over 63 names in Scripture we have a little glimpse of his character and nature. Uh, I love what the scripture says in Psalm 91, verse 4. He will cover you with his feathers. Under his wings you'll find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield. Paul told the Corinthians, God is faithful through whom you were called into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ. Yes, God is faithful. And we're going to reflect on the faithfulness of God through the Old Testament reading in the life of Joshua. So Joshua got some news. It says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, and when you see Lord capitalized, it's always Yahweh. When it's not, it's um, Adonai, meaning God's sovereignty. But here it's Yahweh. And so Yahweh spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant, and told him, Moses, my servant, is dead. And those few words really say it all. It's not just an ordinary day. It's not an ordinary day because Joshua knew death. Uh, The first generation all died out in the wilderness for their disobedience. They didn't enter the land when they should have. But God was still merciful, so Joshua had seen lots of death. But this is different because this is Moses. Moses, he's the leader. He's the one God uh, anointed and chose to uh, deliver the people. And so what God is saying to Joshua is said, uh, you have to let go of Moses, this person, uh, because now things have shifted. They have changed. I remember the date, 1963, JFK. You know what happened? Yes. A shift in our nation. A president had been assassinated. Well, what did yesterday represent to Joshua? Well, he was a young man when Moses came to Egypt. He heard the the news that, yeah, you're going to go to the promised land. And so he saw the miracles of God, the plagues, the Red Sea parting, Uh, food, provision, uh, victory over enemies, the pillar of cloud by day and fire by night. He had seen so much uh, water from a rock, manna and quail, God's faithfulness as they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. Now God is saying again, Joshua, let go of the ways I blessed you yesterday. I'll never forget what JFK said. It's not what the country can do for you, it's what you can do for the country. 
And so the, 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 the blessing of a president, the wisdom, all that was uh, imparted to a nation, again, grateful for that wisdom, but have to let go. You can't live on yesterday's blessing. doesn't mean yesterday blessings were bad. doesn't mean we don't remember them. doesn't mean we're not grateful. But part of our journey in life is to look forward to present blessings and how God wants to uh, shower that grace upon us in the now and in the tomorrow. You know, when we lived in South Carolina, the only home we've ever had the privilege of building from the ground up it was a wonderful, it was a blessing, it was encouraging. But then God called us to Minnesota, and it was a 1980 model. doesn't mean that was a bad blessing, it just we really liked the, the home that we had just built. So God says to us, be grateful for yesterday's blessing while holding it loosely, not holding so tightly onto it. And for Joshua, that may have even meant some frustration. Because you remember Joshua and Cable, uh, Caleb uh, spied out the land and say, we got this, we can do it, God's grace is with us, we can take the land. And remember the, the people said, oh, that's wonderful, Joshua and Cable, we're, we're with you. No, he didn't, they didn't say that. They, they complained, they rebelled, they disobeyed God. And so sadly, the majority took over. They had to wander 40 years in the wilderness because of their disobedience. Maybe Joshua was thinking, you know, I could have been here already. Maybe he was frustrated. Maybe there was some bitterness. And so God is saying to him, if there's anything in your life, Joshua, that frustrations you need to let go of, that's also part of the package I have for you. There was a couple who had been married over 60 years. They had no secrets between one another except the shoebox and the wife cautioned her husband never to look, never to open it. Well, she became very ill, discovered the illness was terminal. And so she said, dear, bring the shoebox down. And so he did. And as they looked inside, he found two crocheted dolls and $25,000 in cash. His wife said, well, when we were married, my grandma said the, the way to have a blessed marriage is never to argue. So whenever I get angry with you, I should keep quiet and crochet a doll. Well, tears ran down his face as he discovered my wife was only angry with me twice. Well, he said, that explains the dolls, but what about the $25,000 in cash? She said, well, I made that from selling the dolls. Let it go. Let it go. What do you need to let go of today? Is there some anger, some fear, some frustration, some worries? Let it go. There's grace to bring it to the cross, to be washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the blessing of repentance and confession. It's the heartbeat of the Christian life. Let it go. Bring it to the cross. Bring it to Jesus. His love, He empowers us to be the people of God. Or as someone said, Yesterday ended last night, and today is fresh grace, fresh mercy for the journey we're presently on as we let it go and bring it to Jesus. And then God says to Joshua, you, you got to look forward to tomorrow. So how does, how does God bring the next phrase? He said, now, Joshua, arise, cross this Jordan, you and all the people, to the land I'm given you, to the sons of Israel, every place on which the sole of your foot treads, I've given it to you, just as I promised to Moses. And that had to have been pretty good news. God turns his heart and the people of God toward tomorrow. There's a, a little phrase I came across, and I believe it's true. I want you to reflect on it. It says, when we have more memories than dreams, life is over. How many would agree with that? If we have more memories, then how can God use me tomorrow and today? We're in trouble. Yes, there's a time to grieve. There's a time for everything, but there's also a time to look forward, to, to keep going. You know, I love Joe DiMaggio's spirit. 
he was late in his career. The Yankees were ahead in the pennant race. And he was asked, uh, why do you play so hard? Here's Joe DiMaggio's response. Because there might be somebody out there who's never seen me play. Every time he put on that Yankee uniform, even though he was up there in years, he gave it his all. He wasn't going to quit. He was going to give 100%. Well, you know the uniform we wear every day. We're clothed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Uh, we wear the, the clothes of Christ, the, the blood of Christ, because of the cross and the resurrection. Every day we can be the loved and forgiven people of God. So every day we should have Joe's attitude saying, Lord, who needs the hope of Jesus today? Who around me needs a little encouragement in my family, in the community? Certainly our care center residents need encouragement. They're presently on lockdown. Maybe there's other things going on in um, our lives that people need encouragement. Colonel George Washington Gettles was responsible for completing the Panama, Panama Canal. He had some challenges like climate, geography, but the biggest was the growing criticism from those who predicted he would never finish. Finally, a colleague said, aren't you going to answer the critics? He said, in time. Well, they said, when? When the canal is finished. See, he was going forward. So I put a little saying in your middle of your notes. If you want to be distressed, look within. If you want to be defeated, look back. If you want to be distracted, look around. But if you really want to be dangerous for Jesus, look ahead and up because uh, he has a plan, he has a purpose, he has a calling for our lives here until he calls us home. To me, that's passion. Question, what are you passionate about for tomorrow? I know for me, the best is coming. We're going to have a glorified body. But till then, what are you passionate about? Well, we're passionate that we can live for Jesus. We can be passionate that we're here. We can be passionate that we're blessed to be a blessing. How's that for passion? Another Thanksgiving is right around the corner. Another season of Christmas is right around the corner. We have much to look forward to tomorrow. Well, let go of yesterday. Look forward. The best is coming. Third thought is take hold of today by the grace of God. So God continues to say to Joshua, just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. And when you see the use, put your name in there. Just as I was with Moses and the saints before, I'll be with Chris. I'll be with the Bluffs family. I will not fail Chris or the Bluffs family or forsake Chris and the Bluffs family. You see how personal it is. And that's God's word to us, not just uh, centuries ago, but right now in Jesus Christ. <laughs> I love the a three-year-old girl was tossing and turning, very scared. The, a lightning storm, it was windy, and she finally ran to her parents' bedroom and said, Mommy, Mommy, I'm scared. Mom said, Go back to your room. Jesus will be with you. The little girl said, Mommy, I'll sleep here with Daddy, and you go and sleep with Jesus. You know, we learn, we grow. Because of God's faithfulness, that imparts courage. Notice four times God said to Joshua, be strong and courageous. Why did he say that four times? Well, Joshua would have a tough job. Big choose to fill. Uh, there was still much land to conquer. There was a whole future there unknown. So Joshua needed empowerment as the leader now of the people of God. And so uh, he needed courage. And sometimes it's easier to have courage when it's for someone else for sure. But the issue isn't if God is with us, but realizing that His presence is with us in every situation that we have. There was a, a story about a, a little boy who had been invited to a birthday party. He was really looking forward, counting the days down until the party. Well, in their little town, the morning of the party, and, well, earlier, one of the worst blizzards ever hit the town. 
uh, the snow was already uh, a couple feet deep. The wind was blowing, zero visibility. And Dad said, son, I don't think you should go to the party. Of course he was disappointed. But Dad, you know, it's not that far away. I, I can make it. It's okay. Well, to his surprise, Dad said he could go. Well, he bundles up, and he started down the street to his friend's house. Trudge, one plod at, the, at a time. Uh, the snow was deep. It seemed like an eternity just to go a c- couple blocks. Well, he finally gets to the door, and somehow he, he turns around, and he saw his father turning to walk back home. And he realized his father had been walking behind him all the way to keep him safe. How's that for a reminder that the presence of our Heavenly Father is with us as we're trudging through our own journey of life? For some of us, the steps are difficult. There's the pain. There might be that cancer. There might be that hardship. There might be that sorrow. Whatever is in your blank, our Heavenly Father is with us every step of the way. How's that for some good news today? Finally, faithfulness also brings success. What I find very interesting here is that when God told Joshua, my word should not depart from your mouth, you'll meditate on it day and night, do what it says, and notice it says, your way will be prosperous and you will have success. Now let me point something out. This is the only place in scripture where the word success is mentioned and it's connected in relationship to the word of God I like to think that God is saying to us to be a a stow and show Christian now what do you mean by that chaplain it means that as we stow the word of God in our heart you know um, faith comes by hearing hearing by the word of God which is true but we also study, read, memorize, and meditate upon it throughout the week. That's why you got the notes, so you don't throw them away, but you keep stowing and stowing. And so as that Word of God transforms, changes us on the inside, gives us hope, then we can show the character of Christ to those around us. Or in other words, we may be the only Bible some people ever read. They both go together. That's how we prosper. We prosper spiritually and trust God in the rest of the way. You know, back in 1854, Congress said this. Congress of the United States recommends and approves the Holy Bible for use in our schools. Wouldn't that be nice if that happened again today? Wouldn't it be nice if we could get back to the Word of God? Would it be a different country? Would be at a different place if we would not have abandoned that to begin with? Only God knows for sure. Yeah, he's still with us. He won't leave or forsake us for sure. But let me close with a a final true story. Bill McPherson was superintendent of a stone quarry. The blast severely injured him, lost his eyesight in both hands in an explosion, but he was determined to read the Bible. So he learned to read raised letters, how? With the tip of his tongue. He read through the Bible four times with what? The tip of his tongue. How would you like to explain to Mr. McPherson why you can't read the Word of God? I think we'd... So the power is, yes, we're here today. The encouragement is, by grace, keep studying, keep reading. Go to those Bible studies. uh, Get that Word of God in your life because that's what changes us. That's what changes the world one heart at a time. Well, let go, look forward, embrace. God imparts his courage. That's what brings success. And the good news is God is faithful no matter what. How many can say amen to that? Amen. I invite you to turn the page for prayers of the day where we share, Lord, in your mercy, and we respond here in our prayer. Just a reminder, this Wednesday at 2 o'clock, is our community Thanksgiving service in the chapel this Wednesday, 2 o'clock. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful you revealed your character and nature to us, just a little glimpse. 
Empower us to let go of yesterday, to look forward to tomorrow, and by your grace, continue trudging away one step at a time. Help us trust your faithfulness today and into 2024 with courage and the success your word brings in our life. Lord, in your mercy. And so we pray that grace upon President Joe Biden, Governor Mike Parson, and all those entrusted with authority. Lord, we pray you'd continue to raise up men and women of God who can be that leaven in, in where there's darkness for our country and nation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Always with gratitude, we're thankful for those who've served our country in the armed forces, who lay their lives down in many other ways in times of disaster. And so we pray today your extra blessing in this season of thanksgiving upon them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. With gratitude, we come before you saying, thank you, Lord, that our independent living community is COVID-free. But we still have others in the care center, maybe other places that have the COVID bug. So we ask you to extend your hand of peace and presence upon them. Heal them moment by moment. Give them courage and faith. Lord, in your mercy. We certainly pray an end to war, whether it be in Israel, the Ukraine, other places. Lord, continue to bring comfort to those who've lost loved ones in the wars that are around us. Lord, in your mercy. We celebrate the body of Christ, the church of Jesus Christ. It's pastors, it's missionaries, the churches represented here in our community. Allow your grace to empower the people of God to continue to be light in the darkness in which we live. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. With gratitude, we thank you for our staff who supports so many here in the care center, assisted living, for our families, our residents, Lynn Spriggs, our ED, Adam Marles, our CEO. What a joy and blessing it is to be at the Bluffs. We thank you for those who may be new. We pray those who may be guests, and we're just grateful for your presence in their lives. Let your grace be extended to us in this Thanksgiving season. Keep us safe as we gather with family and friends. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And those who are mourning loved ones, maybe those who have passed maybe for years, this is a challenging time when we come to Thanksgiving and and the season of Christmas. There's that empty spot. And so wrap your arms of love around those who uh, know and, and remember the blessings their loved ones were in their lives. And just extra encouragement for each of us where that empty chair is presently. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We especially pray for those who need your healing grace, and we thank you for Debbie Ebel, who had successful neck surgery, continue to bring healing grace to her. Extra peace for Mary Totten as her granddaughter is in the final stages of cancer. Lord, just lift her up. You know that uh, you're with them every step. Barbara Lane's niece, Julie. Betty Siebel's daughter, Carrie. The Adams family, Fran, who's presently in reach on hospice, continue healing for Joan Walton's arm, your continued grace for Merle, we thank you for where you've brought him, continue to uh, grant your healing grace each and every day. The Hulkstetter's daughter, Susan, other staff, other people who may be on our hearts, we uh, surrender them, we let them go before you, knowing you're with them and you're, you're there, you're faithful in their lives. Now as we receive the body and blood of Christ, continue to transform us into the image of Christ so we may reflect that grace, that forgiveness to those around us. Whatever prayers may be on our heart, we pray the Lord's Prayer that you taught us. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be thy thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy thy will be done done, on earth earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day day our daily bread. bread, And And forgive forgive us our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive forgive those who trespass against against us. And and lead us not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. evil. For thine thine is the kingdom, kingdom, and the power, and the the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
We continue with our invitation to the Lord's Supper for communion as we sing it a cappella to the tune of Come Ye Thankful People Come. May the good Lord be with you and with you his servant too. Lift your hearts to God in praise. To the Lord our hearts we raise. Let us offer praises true. It is proper so to do. To the Lord be thanks and praise for his love that crowns our days. The Lord's Supper is for Christians, members of the body of Christ, who know they're sinners saved by grace through faith in Jesus alone. Do you believe the body and blood of Christ is present in, with, and under the bread and wine? I believe this bread is your body, and and this this wine wine is your blood. blood. Do we wish to receive the many blessings of this sacrament? I wish wish to receive receive forgiveness of sins, sins, eternal life, life and and salvation. salvation. Open my heart heart to the truth of Jesus' Jesus words, poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we We proclaim proclaim Christ's death until until he comes. comes. The Lord Jesus Christ, in the same night he was betrayed, took the bread After giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this often to remember me. In the same manner, also after supper, he took the cup. After giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this often to remember me. The peace and grace and faithfulness of our Lord Jesus be with you always. For our communion distribution this morning, we invite the communion team to come forward as we sing Lamb of God. When they're finished communion, we invite you to come forward. Just ask you to extend your palm. We'll put the host there, and there's baskets on the side for the, uh, uh, the cups. If you're not able to come forward, again, we'll come out to you, so just stay where you're at, and we'll bring it. Raise your hand so we, we don't miss anyone. If you'd like a blessing, please cross your arms. We'll be have a, a blessing as well. And again, you'll see the cross this morning has uh, the letters that uh, represent in Greek Jesus' name. It was a a special blessing for Shirley's 85th birthday, if you didn't hear. So uh, we got an extra processional cross to uh, signify the, the grace of God in our life. All is ready. Let's sing Lamb of God as the communion team comes forward. As you receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, be embraced in his faithfulness, go in his peace, love, and forgiveness. Amen. Amen. 
all is ready, I invite you to come forward as we sing the hymns in the bulletin.
invite you to turn the page for our blessing and hymn of thanksgiving, top of page 15. As you've received the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he's, He is faithful. Go in His love, forgiveness, peace. Extend that gift He's given to you to others. Go as a loved, forgiven child of God. With joy we sing. together. I, I thank, thank you, my, my Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, through your, Jesus son, Christ, your, your, son, your Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm, harm and danger, and, and I, I pray you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, evil that all my doings and life may please you, for into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. I have one announcement. There is no grief 201 group, uh, support group tomorrow, so um, just be aware of that. And from Chaplain Carla, myself, and all of us here at the Bluffs, we extend to you and your families a very blessed Thanksgiving. We join together in the responsive benediction. The Lord bless and keep you, his face shine upon you. The Lord look with favor and grant you his peace. May all of our living resound with thanksgiving. To Father, Son, and Spirit our praises increase.